tough pity for Qualar. From a historical perspective, it is the most important trans-Neptunian object since Pluto. Yeah, yeah, everyone hates on Eris, but Eris would never have been found if Qualar had not been found first. There was no reason, after all, for Mike Brown to conduct his survey for, as they would have been then, planets in the Kuiper Belt. Up until that point, the belt had comprised Pluto, Charon, and bits of ice. Quawar had taken Brown three years of fruitless searching to find, and he'd almost given up twice. It was the first planet-sized object found in the solar system since Pluto's moon Charon nearly 25 years previously, and the first to be found directly orbiting the Sun since Pluto itself in 1930. But in the flood of planetary mass discoveries found after it, eight, if you're inclusive, Quawar seems to have been largely forgotten. I understand why. As a red, methane-dominated classical Kuiper Belt object with one small moon and no discernible atmosphere, Quawar is essentially a smaller version of the larger and better-known Maki Maki. Unlike Haumea, which spins so quickly it almost tears itself in half, or Sedna, which travels so far from the sun it spends thousands of years in interstellar space, Quawar simply doesn't have much to distinguish it. Until now. All of a sudden, for the first time since its discovery, Quawar is topping the science news pages. Because on the 8th of February, Bruno Morgado, a Brazilian astronomer employing several Earth based telescopes, as well as the European Space Agency's CHEOPS space telescope, managed to locate a ring around the aspiring planet. Like all rings in the outer solar system, Quawar's was found indirectly, by examining the light from the world as it passed in front of a star, an event known as an occultation. If the star momentarily winks out before the world eclipses it, that's a good sign a ring is present. By reviewing past occultations between 2018 and 2021, Morgado was able to pinpoint not only the ring, but also its structure. Like the rings of Neptune, Quawar's ring is clumpy and irregular with patches containing particles up to a kilometer in diameter. Calculations suggest that radiation pressure from the sun would knock away any particles smaller than 0.1 millimeters over the course of just a few years. Morgado and company believe that the ring is most likely to breathe from the same collision that created Quaoar's small moon, Weiwat. In itself, this discovery is not particularly earth-shattering. Rings are fairly common among the icy bodies of the outer solar system. Haumea has one, the centaurs Chiron and Caraclo both have one, and even Saturn's small moon Rhea may have one. But these rings were different in one respect. Like the rings of Saturn, they lay below their primary's rush limits. An object orbiting another object, even a black hole, can stay in orbit perfectly happily until it tumbles below a certain point above the other object. Once it does, the forward-facing edge of the falling object begins to feel more gravity than the trailing edge, and the object slowly gets torn apart. The point at which this happens is the Roche limit, and it is where you would expect to find the rubble of planetary rings. But Quawar's ring lies at 4,100 kilometers, or roughly 7.4 Quawar radii, far outside Quawar's estimated Roche limit of 1,800 kilometers. The only other rings in the solar system known to be outside their world's rush limits are tenuous, dusty things like Saturn's F-ring, not clumpy rings like this. Impact-generated rings outside rush limits have lifespans of decades, not the age of the solar system. The odds of the ring appearing by chance, therefore, are minuscule. Morgado and team suggest that Quawar's ring is evidence that the rush limit may need to be revised. It already must be readjusted for the object's relative densities. Could such things as temperature or dynamics also play a role? Perhaps the gravitational effects of Weiwat? All we can do is keep looking.